subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. Many of us, maybe most of us, have watched Game of Thrones and we are familiar with dire wolves. These are the animals that Jon Snow found as pups and each of the Stark children got one that they were connected to or walked into if you've read the books. And dire wolves were in fact actual real animals that had gone extinct about 13,000 to about 9,500 years ago. Now the dire wolf genome has been sequenced for the first time and we have even more information about these extinct animals than we did before. We used to think that the dire wolf is very closely related to the modern wolf but turns out that the dire wolf diverged genetically from the modern wolf about 5.7 million years ago. In this video, we'll discuss dire wolves, what we know about them and what the new genetic sequencing reveals about their origin, life and habitat. I'm Sandhya Ramesh and this is Pure Science. The dire wolf was a powerful carnivorous predator that lived primarily in North America alongside the saber-toothed cat or the saber-toothed tiger some 10,000 to 13,000 years ago. There were hunters that lived on other now extinct large animals like bison, horses and even mammoths. For the longest time, it was thought that the dire wolves were actually a sister species to the grey wolf. But last week, scientists sequenced the dire wolf genome for the first time and made some startling discoveries. It turned out that the dire wolf genome showed such a large genetic separation from wolves, Canis lupus, and separated by so much time that it is in fact not just a separate species from the wolf but a whole separate genus itself. We've seen before in other pure science videos as well as studied the taxonomic classifications that go upward as species which belong to the same genus, which in turn belongs to a family, which in turn belongs to an order and so on. So dire wolves are now taxonomically ranked not just as a species but a genus. So it's no longer under the Canis genus which holds Canis lupus, the wolf, or Canis lupus familiaris, the dog. It's still under the family of canids but now it's called the Anocyonidus. Under this genus, the dire wolf is the only species. The scientists who did the sequencing of the dire wolf genome discovered that the last common ancestor of the grey wolf and the dire wolf lived about 5.7 million years ago. Another finding that they made is that the dire wolf didn't really interbreed with other related species. We know that under the same genus, two different species can actually interbreed. Wolves can breed with dogs, dogs can breed with coyotes and so on. We've seen this in lions and tigers as well. Lions are a different species from tigers but lions and tigers can interbreed. A male lion and a female tiger can breed to produce a liger which is also the name of an upcoming Telugu movie. A male tiger and a female lion can interbreed and produce a tigon. But in the case of the dire wolves, they never interbred with any other canis species, clearly because they're a separate genus. Their genome was completely distinct and did not hold bits and pieces of other animals like we find when we examine the genetic sequences of say wolves or foxes or dingoes or jackals. All of them interbred with each other and they still carry genetic material from other species which we can trace today and understand their evolutionary history from. We previously hadn't been able to sequence the dire wolf genome because although we have some 4,000 fossils, they were recovered from a tar pit and tar tends to make it extremely difficult to extract DNA. So we used to compare the skeletal structure and the morphology of the dire wolf skeletons and we found that they were really similar to the modern wolf, just about 20 to 25% bigger in size which is actually much smaller than the dire wolves that are depicted in Game of Thrones. The researchers also discovered that the dire wolves possibly lived in North America some 250,000 years ago and were around till the first modern humans arrived in the Americas some 15,000 years ago. 
They've also lived in South Americas and in the steppy plains of Eastern Asia. The researchers, in fact, say that they think the dire wolves might have interacted with our early human ancestors. Dire wolf fossils have been found mostly below the 42 degree north latitude, which runs through the US, Southern Europe and China. There have been some three or four fossils that have been found above this latitude, but it was believed that dire wolves didn't really live there because they couldn't adapt to the extreme cold, as well as to the lack of easily huntable prey in these latitudes. But we have discovered fossils of dire wolves in the steppes of Asia just last year. We made a lot of discoveries during the pandemic. These Asian dire wolves, whose fossils were discovered just a few years ago, were found in the Songhua River in northeastern China. Paleoanthropologists from the Chinese Academy of Sciences who analyzed these fossils discovered that even though the fossils did resemble dogs and wolves, the closest thing that it resembled was dire wolf fossils previously found only in the Americas. But the only way dire wolves would have gotten to Asia because they were native to North America is by crossing the Bering Land Bridge, which was the landmass that connected Alaska and Russia ages ago. Today, the area is not fully connected by land, but in prehistoric times, there was a land bridge of up to 1000 kilometers. And this bridge was not covered in ice either, as the snowfall was really light during the last ice age, and it was thought to be a grassland steppe. In Game of Thrones 2, there was a land bridge called the Arm of Dawn to the south of Dawn that connected Westeros to Essos. The first men came from Essos to Westeros using this land bridge before the children broke it off. Similarly, humans also migrated using the Bering Land Bridge from Siberia to Alaska. But despite the direwolves having come to Asia, they didn't really seem to thrive here. They likely faced competition from similarly sized animals like hyenas and thus couldn't really find a niche to fit in. This is all just a theory because the evidence of direwolves having been in Asia is based on very limited fossils. But back in North America, when it comes to prey, the direwolves were thought to have eaten not just bisons and mammoths, but also prehistoric horses and even ground sloths, camels and even mastodons. The direwolf was also a hypercarnivore, which means more than 70% of its diet consisted of meat and it was a pack hunter. There are many theories as to why direwolves went extinct. They are thought to have died out along with other megafauna or large animals, animals that weighed more than 50 kilos. This happened just after humans arrived in the New World or Western Hemisphere and when climate change also began. Environmental conditions were changing for all animals and this had a cascading effect through the food chain. And we can also observe this in fossil evidence. When we look at just dire wolves, we can see that the shape of their faces and their snouts change along with changing climatic and environmental conditions. One of the main reasons for the extinction of large carnivorous megafauna is of course the extinction of herbivorous megafauna, which are the main source of food. This could have been from a combination of animals being unable to adapt to changing climatic conditions or, as ever, over-exploitation by humans.